just go to new file and it should allow you to search for that template and use your ANSI A. So go ahead and get that started. First thing you're going to do is make sure you're in zero layer. So we want to draw in zero layer, not another layer. So make sure you're in zero layer. We also want to turn on ortho and O snap. And I have um, copied the picture over so we don't have to go back and forth. So is this inch or metric? Okay, we're in inch values. So we don't really need to zoom out. We can, whenever we open up, we're, we're in good focus already. If it was metric, we would want to zoom out a few times. So when we created our lines, they wouldn't be really, really small. So the first thing we'll do is start with our L. Okay. So I just made a line straight down, straight over. Start with an L. What is our total width of this object? We see that in the 3.78. So that's going to be our first offset. So we're going to offset 3.78, enter. And we're going to offset that from the vertical line. Okay, now your lines may not have been as long as mine, so if it Looks like you've offsetted more than me. It, it's just a, a matter of perspective on how big we made our L. Um, 3.78 is the width that we offsetted. So you can see my mouse surrounding that 3.78. And we see width in the front view and the top view. The next thing that we're going to look for is the total height. So our height right here is seen where you see my mouse. It's this two. So we're going to offset two. So we're gonna click on offset, type in two, enter. And this time we're gonna offset from the horizontal line. We're gonna offset up. So we have successfully made our front view right here. Um, so you could stop and do the front view, but while we're offsetting, since everything has the same height, width, and depth, because it is the same object, we want to go ahead and just create all of those views, the outline for the views, so we can make our miter line. Okay? And we talked about the distance in between the views needs to be about an inch and a half. So we're going to, our next offset is 1.5. So we're going to offset 1.5, enter. So the line that we offsetted for the height, we're going to offset up from that same line. And the one from the width, we're going to offset over to the right. So what we have now, this little space here where my mouse is, is the distance in between the views. So that's our space. And this area here is also our space between the views. So now we need to offset the depth and we see the depth in the right side and the top. So the depth is 2.24 and we can see it if you see my mouse circling that is the depth so it's 2.24 so we're going to do two offsets of 2.24 so we're going to click on offset Type in 2.24, enter, and we're going to offset up from this top line, from this horizontal line, offset up, and then from the rightmost vertical line, we'll offset over. Okay, so now we have all of our views. This area here is our top view, this area is our front view, and this area is our right side view. We're also lined up very nicely to have a miter line. And our miter line is drawn at 45 degrees. So we could come down here and change this to 45 and then create the line. 
But what you're going to notice, because these distances are the same and we offset, you'll notice that our minor line goes through that next intersection point for the extra line space that we made from our right and our top. Uh, so if you do it correctly and use the correct space in between and the correct depth on both of them, then that miter line is automatically set up between those two diagonal points. Okay, so the miter line is 45 degrees and it's going to help us transfer the measurements from the right side to the top and from the top to the right side. And we're really going to need that in this drawing. So right now, I'm just trimming out what I don't need, some of this extra stuff over here. I can also trim in between the views so I can see them a little bit better. I'm keeping my miter line. We'll erase that later, but for now, we're going to keep it. So here's my top, front, and right side. So the first thing I'm going to do, you know, typically you're going to see the most detail in your front view. Well, uh, in some cases we can draw all of the front view and then you know, start on either the top or the right side view. But in this drawing, we do not have all of the dimensions we need to create an entire front view. We have to find what those dimensions are by becoming by bringing over lines from our top and our right. So we can't just do all of one view and then move to the next one. We've got to do all the views simultaneously. So we'll do what we can in the front and then what we can in the right, what we can in the top, and then at the end it'll all work out. So for now in our front view, we know if we look at some of these width dimensions, we have a 0.74 that goes over to get this line. Um, this angle is 45, so we're going to see that as an a inclined surface. We're going to see it as a line in our front view, so we can make it. And then we can also go over this 1.12. But our first step, let's do 0.74. We're going to offset that to get this edge right here. So let's go to offset, 0.74, enter. And we're going to choose our right side of our front view here, vertical line, and we'll offset to the left. And that gives us our starting point for our 45 degree angle. So again, you want to make sure that your polar is set to 45. So you click on the little arrow beside polar, set it to 45, and now our line command, since we're in polar, we can make a 45 degree line. So when you see that green projection line come out, you know you're at the right angle. And we can make that 45 degree angle. Now I just went ahead and took it on out past the line because it's very easy to trim. And that way we didn't accidentally snap on a midpoint or an endpoint or something that we didn't mean to snap on. So we can go ahead and trim that corner out since we have that point. Okay, the next thing, we don't really need this line. We can go ahead and delete it because it's served our purpose. So let's get rid of it just so it's not in the way and, and doesn't cause confusion. The next point that we know is this 1.12. So we can offset over to get that edge. So let's do an offset. Top in 1.12, enter, and um, actually, I'm sorry, we do need that line to offset from, or we could just uh, draw another line that was 1.12. Um, either way, we could put that line back, or we could just draw a line. Uh, if you're using direct coordinate entry, which is our uh, way of typing in, if you click on that endpoint and just move your mouse to the left and type in 1.12, that's called direct coordinate entry method. So now um, we could delete the longer line and we could see that we have a line that's 1.12. Or we could have you know, put this line back and offset it over 1.12. 
Either way would have been correct. And either way, we're going to end up with this endpoint that we need right here. Because that's the start of our 30 degree angle. So we're going to have to change our polar. We're going to come down here and change it back to 30 degrees. So it'll snap every 30 degree increment now. We're coming up here, we're clicking on the line command, and we're going to select that endpoint or that intersection point if you just offset it. And you're going to get your 30 degrees. Now, remember in polar coordinates, it's 30 degrees from wherever it's at. So right now it's taking me 30 degrees from that right horizontal. So if we go around um, in that direction, that's actually a 150 degree angle. Okay, but it's 30 degrees from the horizontal on the left side, so we're still good. So don't let that confuse you. And if we had all of the degrees, you can see that it's actually a 210 degree angle. We get that because it's 180 plus 30, which is the 210 angle that we have. So we're just going to make that line. I didn't make it a certain distance, but you do want to drag it out kind of far. And I'll show you, we don't really know where it ends just yet, but we will have that figured out in just a moment. Okay. So, so far we made that 45 degree angle by offsetting over 0.74. We went over 1.12. We made this 30 degree angle. Now to get the end point of that 30 degree angle, we need to offset down 0.74 to find this edge. Okay? So we offset down 0.74 where that edge begins, and then we'll just take our line all the way over till it meets where our 30 degree angle is. Um, so I got rid of my line. I need to draw at least part of that back. And now would be a good time to toggle back over to ortho to make sure that we're making straight lines. So we're, we're done making that angle for now, so we need to put ortho back on. So this line is what we're going to offset down to get that 0.74 mark. So we're going to click on offset Top in 0.74, enter, and just offset down that 0.74. And you can see where the 0.74 line intersects with the 30 degree angle. That's where it, it terminates into that edge. So we can trim everything out around it. Okay, so you're starting to see the front view shape up there. Now some of these other shapes, we are not going to be able to create until we do the right side view. So we can actually offset over this one on either side, and we can offset over 1.14 but we really don't know the height of these cutouts until we create the right side view. So we can go ahead and do our offsets, but we're not going to be able to fully complete the front view until we get our right side view done. So let's go ahead and offset over one, and then we'll do a 1.14, and then we'll come back to this side and offset back over to our left one inch as well. Or we could actually, since these are the same, we could do a one here and a one here and use the same offset command. So we're um, helping out with a little bit in efficiency by using that same offset. So click on offset, type in one, enter. We're going to click on the left side here, offset to the right one. Click on the right side and offset back into the left one because both of those just happen to be of one inch dimension. Okay, We don't really know how tall up to offset, so we can't complete it, but that's where our right side view comes in. Uh, we got one more offset, we'll do this 
So we're going to click on offset again, type in 1.14, enter, and I'll go from this line over to the right, that 1.14. So right now, that's all we can do in our front view until we create our right side view. All right? Anybody have any questions? Okay. So in our right side view, we'll just jump over to it. We know that we can offset 0.5 right here. And from that 0.5, we know that we have an angle. So what is this angle right here? It's going to be 45. So we're going to, from the 0.5 mark, and we know because if you can see my cursor, that 45 is coming from this point. That point is along that same construction line as that 0.5 dimension. So it's 45 from that uh, edge there all the way down. So the first step for us is to offset 0.5 from this line back to the left. So we're going to click on offset. We're going to type in 0.5, enter. Offset back to the left. That gives us this intersection right here at the end point of that line to make our 45 degree angle. So we have to go back to polar, make sure it's set on 45, and we're going to click on line and click on the end point to start it. And we're just going to make sure that we have a 45 degree angle. So when the, the green dotted line comes up, you know you're in line at, at some kind of 45 degree increment. This one just happens to be a 225 degree angle. Or if you're coming from the horizontal on the back side there, you can see it's 135 degrees. But if we do 180 plus 45, that's where we're getting that 225 that pops up on our polar coordinates there. So now that we have this 45 degree angle, we can figure out you know, what these heights are going to be by using our depth dimension. See this 0.54 and this 0.76? We need to offset those. So the, the first little cutout here is offset back 0.54. Now in the right side view, we're, we're going to see that as a hidden line, but we still need to create it. So let's do a 0.54 offset. So we're going to go offset 0.54, enter. And it's going to come from this vertical line. So I'm clicking on the vertical line. I'm going to the right and clicking and we need to go ahead and bring that line over so we don't get confused because we're going to do a, another offset of 0.76 and you don't want to get confused on which is which so let's let's go ahead and trim so we're going to click on trim and we know that we don't need the top of that line but we do need the bottom to stay as a hidden line so I'm trimming out that bottom, and I can go ahead and trim out extra on that 45-degree um, angle line. But what I need is this point where that 0.54 offset intersects with that 45-degree angle line. So I'm going to bring that over as a projection line into my front view. So I used my right side view to figure out where the height is for this little cutout. So the line that I brought over is actually this edge right here. And I couldn't find that until I did the right side view. So we'll go ahead and trim out because we only need that height at this one spot. So that, that height was for this part. Okay, so once we trim around that, 
we can just go ahead and delete that projection line. And I tell you to do that as you go because once you have a whole lot of projection lines, sometimes you um, kind of confuse yourself as to what line goes with what. So since we don't need this anymore, we'll just delete it. Now we're not going to delete this line because that line is actually a hidden line. And we can click on it and go ahead and make it hidden so we don't forget. So that's our first hidden line in our right side view. Then the next offset that we need is this 0.76 line. So we're going to offset over again that 0.76 and bring the line projected from that intersection over to get the height here. Okay. So our offset is 0.76, so we'll click on offset and type in 0.76, enter. From the same edge, offset to the right. And again, we, we need the bottom part, we don't need the top part, so we'll go ahead and trim that top part. Now this line is not going to be a hidden line because from the right side view we can actually see that line and you can see it's this edge here where my cursor is. But we need to bring the projection line over from that endpoint to, to this offsetted line here. That was a, that one offset that we did. So this is the height for the other cutout section. So once we get that section, we can trim. And now we don't need the projection line anymore, so we delete it. So in our right side view, we have the hidden line. We have this line that's going to stay visible. Uh, we can actually trim out this little corner section here. So we could trim this line and this line, which gives us this little area that, that we see here and here. All right, so there are a few other things that we're going to have to put in our right side view uh, that we haven't yet because we still need to bring this line over. We're going to see that as um, hidden because remember this line is representative of the surface that we see here. So from the right side view, we don't actually see that surface that's going to be hidden. But we do see this edge here. Okay, so how, how do we know how we can get this edge? Do we have anything that we can use to figure out how far well, down? Okay, so we have to use our front view to figure out where that edge is. So we're going to click on the line command and just bring our projection line over. And again, I'm still in polar. I know that I created a, a straight line because I saw my green dotted line come up, but it's much easier if you're using ortho. You don't have to think about it as much. So turn ortho back on. So I brought this projection line over now we talked about this line has to be a hidden line in the right side view. So let's bring a line over from there too. And look what happens guys. We have a line over top of a line. So in our precedence of lines, if you have a visible line and a hidden line that's in the same spot, which line do we need to put? What do you think? You think the visible line is most important? Yes, it is. So because we have two lines over top of each other, we're going to put the visible line because it is technically the most important line. So we're not even putting that hidden line from for this surface because it's over top of each other. And we don't put two lines over top of each other. We just put the most important one. So we're going to keep the line that we already have from this edge for this surface and we're not going to worry about putting the hidden line for this edge. So we can trim that out. We're actually going to see all of it in the right side view here. 
we no longer need this point five line that we created earlier. That was a construction line, so we're going to delete it. So our right side view, now we have uh, this point here. We have this point that we brought over. And you can see this little edge here, this slanted edge. That is this area between where we brought the line over and where we offset it. So now we have uh, this little um, square area with the truncated corner. And we have the triangular area that you see here. Okay, remember it's going to appear foreshortened in surfaces except where we see it as an edge. So inclined surfaces will appear shorter than what they really are except in the viewer you see them as an edge. So the only thing that we need now in our right side view is the circle, which represents the hole. Now, is this a hole that goes all the way through the part? No. How do we know that? It tells us that it's 1.25 deep, so we have to show that. So we're going to find the center first. We're going to offset up 0.62 and offset over 0.76. We'll create that circle, and then we'll create hidden lines for the depth. So for now, we're going to do the 0.62 offset. So we'll click offset, type in 0.62, enter, offset up from the bottom, and then we'll do the 0.76 offset from the right to get that center. So offset. 0.76, enter, and now we have our center point, so we will um, go ahead and make the circle, it has a diameter of 0.625, uh, that drill just means diameter, that's the size drill that they want them to use, so we're going to choose the diameter, the center diameter command, since we have a diameter, and we'll choose that center point. We'll type in 0.625. Enter. So now we have our hole. Okay, so are we going to see the depth in the right side view or the front view? We're actually going to see the depth in the front view and the top view. Right side view, we're looking at it straight on, so we really don't see the depth. Now these center marks, we can delete because we have a center mark command that makes them perfectly. So we'll just go ahead and delete that, and I'll show you the center mark command. But we do need to show the 1.25 depth. So we're going to offset from this surface here, this edge in our front view. We're going to offset in 1.25. So let's go ahead and do that. Offset 1.25. Enter. Okay. And we know this is going to be hidden. So let's go ahead and turn that into a hidden line. And we can put the hidden lines from the quadrants of our circle. Okay? So we, we offset a 1.25 to get this line, and we got that from the depth dimension that it was given. So the next thing we need to do is from the quadrant of this circle, we need to bring those projection lines over to make the hidden lines for our hole in our front view. So I'm just going to go ahead and make my hidden layer current. I could just make it with a zero layer and turn it into a hidden layer. Either way is fine. So I'm going to um, just go to the line command, snap to the quadrant, which is the top of that circle, bring that line over, 
and, and I don't want it to snap on anything so I just brought it on out to uh, kind of override the snaps and then I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom here so now this little area here is where our hole is going to be drilled so we're going to go ahead and trim what we don't need are those headlines so in our front view that's what it's going to look like and we can erase the rest of those projection lines out of our right side view Now because drill is specified, the end point of the drill is actually tapered to a point and that has a 30 degree uh, taper on both sides. So we need to show that because when you drill into an object, the tip of the drill is going to make a little conical shape down inside the part. So you will need to know if that drill is actually you know, going into a place that it shouldn't go into so on a drawing we need to depict that so what we'll do to create that conical shape at that 30 degrees is just turn our polar back on and we want to put it on 30 degrees and we'll click on the line command and just at the end of that 1.25 we'll bring that out we want to make sure that you know the green dotted line shows up for us and we want to do that on both sides okay so this apex or vertex since we're in 2D drawing where that comes together is the tip of our drill that's actually where the drill will get to and, and it's much further than the actual 1.25 depth so we have to account for that when we're designing because uh, if, if that drill went too far we may want to use something besides a drill method to cut that hole and if we put a dimension on this and you don't have to put the dimension but I just want to show you it was 30 degrees on both sides so it's actually 60 degrees overall So that is actually what it would look like if we did drill that hole. So now we've got our front view complete. We don't need any other hidden lines in our front view. Uh, we don't need any other hidden lines in our right side view. We will need to put center lines in, but we'll wait and do that at the end. But for the most part, as far as the uh, dimensional properties, we are complete in those two views. Now because we can do projection lines we shouldn't have to measure anything in our top view we can just bring our lines up so the first thing that I need to do is change this back to zero layer I want to put my zero layer current so I'm not just drawing and hidden um, the first thing that I need to do is go ahead and bring some of these projection lines up so anything that's a vertical line in our front view will become a projection line to bring those dimensions up to our top view so I'm just going to start right here bring that line up I'm not measuring anything I'm just bringing the lines up because I know everything's going to be in line because it's the same part this is just the top view of that same part So I brought those three lines up. I can work on this back part first. So I don't have too many projection lines. So I know that I needed to go 0 0.5. I could actually offset that, but guess what? I have a miter line. So I can come over here where I offset it in the right side view, come up to the miter line. And where it intersects the miter line, I can bring that over. So 
So I transferred this distance up to the miter line and then over to my top view. And that gave me what I needed. Now I still need these angles. So how can I get those angles in the top view, the distances? I don't have any kind of measurements, do I? But I know where they are because of my right side view. So same thing that I did before, I could come right here to this endpoint. So where that 45 met up, remember we brought that over from this point to the right side. Now we're bringing that up to our miter line. And make sure that you're not, see O-snap wants to snap to that midpoint. We don't want it to do that. So it's better just to either have your perpendicular snap on or just bring it on above the line so it doesn't snap to it. And then from that intersection, we'll bring it over. Okay. And remember, this surface right here, or this edge, was in line at this point and this point. Remember, those two were the same edge. So we can use this as the end point for both the 30 degree angle that we see on this side and the 45. And we can do that because the distances are different. Okay? Um, so what that's going to look like for us, we know that the point 5, the little area for the point 5 is only at this space. So if we project that space up, it's only at this surface. Okay? So we're going to take the line command and from that endpoint, we're going to take it down to this intersection where we brought that line. So this line goes up, goes over. We need this intersection point and we already had this intersection. So this little surface here, this 45 degree surface, that's the area for it in the top view. Do the same thing on the other side for the 30 degree angle. See the, the surface for the 30 degree angle here we go to the line command, we start it from this corner, and it goes to this corner. Okay, so we used projection lines, these that, that we brought up, and then these that we brought over to find those intersection points. All right. So some of this stuff we need to go ahead and delete because we're, you know, we're getting kind of condensed in here with lines, so we don't want to get confused. So we'll go ahead and go to the trim command, and we, we know we need to trim out this area. So this surface is actually the surface that we see over here. And then the other parts... We can trim those lines. So this area is actually this 30 degree surface that we see right here. And then this little smaller rectangle is actually this 0.5 surface. So we want to keep the surfaces, but we, we need to understand what, what we should trim too. So this is the little 0.5 rectangle and then the 45 degree surface is actually here. So we need this rectangular surface, this triangular surface, rectangle, and the triangular part. So that gives us all four of those surfaces on the back side of this object. And everything else we can just kind of delete. Uh, we will need, we do have to trim this one because we're going to keep the line right here. But your top view at this point should look like mine on the screen. So we brought lines over or up to our miter line and over to get this endpoint and this endpoint. Now to get the little cutout sections in the front, we're going to have to bring those lines over from our right side view too. So we're going to click on the line command. 
we'll click on the endpoint of that offsetted line and again zoom in or use your perpendicular O snap so you're not snapping to an endpoint that you don't want to snap to. So from that 0.76 offset that we use to get this surface in our front view, we're bringing that up, we're bringing that over. Okay, I know it doesn't go all the way across, but I'm, I'm giving myself plenty of room there. I just brought it over that much. And we also need a projection line from this hidden line. So we'll again bring that up to the miter line. And I'm just right clicking to choose repeat line. You can right click and it'll give you the option to do the same command that you did before. So from the hidden line, I brought it up, brought it over. I know that that needs to be a little bit further out because that, that's going to give us this area and then this line is going to give us this area. Okay, so we need to bring the vertical lines up from the front view so I can do that just by going to the line command and bringing those up. And I'm, I'm just going to the endpoints here. So I, I get my little cutout area here for that first one. And then the second one goes a little bit further back. So it goes to that line that's a little bit further, that 0.76 line. And it actually goes to the outside of the object. So we only need to bring that one line up on that one. So when we trim, we're cutting away the lines that we don't need here. So I always start from the outside and work my way in. It just helps the process. Um, we don't actually have a line here because that is actually cut out and this corner is cut out. So our top view looks a little odd, but that's how that view would work and anything extra in our projection lines that we brought up we need to delete off of these views same thing in our right side view we, do, we don't need those projection lines anymore so we can delete those um, we want to keep our miter line for now because we still got to bring over the the circle or the lines for the hole but um, just to make it less complicated so you can see it easier, I just deleted those projection lines that we've already used because we don't need them anymore. But we do need to bring over the hole. We're going to do it exactly like we did it in the front view. We're going to make our projection lines straight up because I'm just I'm coming from the tip here. I'm coming from that 1.5 offset for the depth. And honestly, I, I probably didn't need to bring that one up from the tip, but that's okay. It keeps us in line. And then I can create, I, I can make this one hidden because I know that's going to be hidden. So I'm just clicking on it, making that a hidden line. But I can also uh, create the hidden lines from the quadrants, from the right and left quadrant, by bringing them up and over using our miter line. So I'm going to um, just make my hidden layer current again. And from the quadrant of this circle, I'll bring it straight up. And I, again, don't snap to that center because it's not actually on the center. And then where it touches the miter line, that intersection, I'm going to bring that over. And just be careful of your snaps. We don't want to snap to anything. So we really only need like this rectangular area so we can trim out. And you'll get more efficient the more you draw. You'll know that I'm um, 
I'm leaving a lot extra here to trim that I probably don't need to. You can use your O-snaps a little more efficiently than I have. Um, I actually trimmed out this projection line. Uh, we, we don't need it because we're going to end up having to do that as an angle anyway. So really all I need was this little rectangular area. Uh, we can get rid of the other projection lines. Once we have our depth there, in order to get this, we could actually copy that up or we could make it again. If we copy, we need to have a common base point and a common displacement point. So we have two common points. We have this endpoint and this endpoint that we could use. Um, so if we clicked on both of those lines that we made that conical point with and go to copy, our base point could be a corner. So I'm going to choose this corner as my base point and click. And then my displacement point is that exact same point up here. So I copied that and saved myself a little bit of time. And we could have actually copied this whole thing had we had a common point to uh, drop it in. All right, so we can get rid of some of these projection lines and uh, we're pretty much done with our miter line too. We do have to bring up a center line but this conical point is actually in line with our center line, so we can use that to make our center. So if you want to get rid of just that whole miter line at this point, you can. To make our center lines, we're going to do a, we're going to make our center layer current. So we're going to click on center layer, make it current. Again, this conical point is in line with the center of the object, so we can just touch off on it to make the start of our center line and then just drag it out a little bit past where the hole would be. So we want it a little bit outside the object and if it is snapping to the end point you either have to zoom in or turn those snaps off for just a second. So we want a center line here and we want a center line just like it at the bottom. So I could copy that center line or I could just make one. It's just as easy to make one. We just we want to make sure they're about the same. Okay. And then the last step will be to make the center mark for this hole. So when we do make the center mark for the hole, there is a center mark command. It's under the annotate toolbar up here. So we would click over on that tab, the annotate tab, and choose center mark. And then it allows us to click on that hole and it makes a nice neat center mark for us. So now we have a finished product. We have the top, front, right side, everything accurate. We have all the hidden lines that we need and we have all of the center marks that we need. So the last thing would be to take it over to paper space. You can double click inside your viewport to activate it. We'll do a zoom extents. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete my picture and do another zoom extents. And then the scale for this object is one to one. And once we get it to scale, we will block it. And we can double click outside the viewport, fill in the title block, and you are complete with this drawing. We're going to save the drawing as figure 7-58. Um, this drawing is called Tool Holder, so figure 7-58, Tool Holder.